Hey, so I'm Hiko Simon, and I am back now with our second episode of How Not to Screw Up in Japan with Rochelle Kopp from Inter Japan Intercultural Consulting. And uh, for our first proper topic today, we're going to talk about what are the biggest mistakes that foreign companies make when they come to Japan. <laughs> So as an expert of watching foreign companies coming to Japan, coming and doing everything wrong and, and messing up and and it's funny, I mean there are some really prominent examples of foreign companies struggling in Japan at the moment, mm -hmm. foreign companies that never seem to get off the ground where they're wildly successful in America. Right. So I mean, help there's me also out. One, There's also ones that are doing great too, so. Yeah, there, I think mm -hmm. there's like two. <laughs> no, I mean of course, also. <laughs> But it is funny, it always seems to be a bit out of sync, right? Like, it took mm -hmm. years for Facebook to get going. We're sitting in the YouTube space right now, mm -hmm. and YouTube, until like two years ago, was behind Nico Nico Doga. Right. So Sometimes it, it takes a while for people to get their sea legs here. Yeah, I mean, you just assume everything's going to do well here, and it does well everywhere else. But So for these foreign companies that come to Japan and expect to roll out in Japan like they're rolling out all over the rest of the world, right. what, what are the types of mistakes that Japanese companies make, uh, foreign companies make? Well, I feel like things go into one of two categories. Yeah. Either people are so wrapped up in, okay, Japan is really, really different, and we have to make everything really Japanese, and often the local people who are hired mm -hmm. are like, yes, Japan's really different, and that's part of their value that they add is in customizing everything. So I see right. a lot of people go too much to that extreme. Yeah. And then I see a lot of people at the other extreme of, oh, this is just like anywhere else, and it's just like London, or it's just like Hong Kong, or it's just like Shanghai. And mm -hmm. of course, it's really not. So it's usually one, one of those types at, at some extreme. So you think that companies over-localize sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. I'd always think, I mean, so my instinct is, and I'm, I'm a Japanese culture Nazi type. I, 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 I say, you know, you have to come here and respect the local culture first. But, so mm -hmm. there are examples you think where companies have over-localized and not succeeded? Right. And there's also examples where people have not localized and it's worked really well for them. Okay. where they've done something really different. So one example is Starbucks. And so until Starbucks came, coffee shops were really smoky. And they came yes. in and said, we're going to be non-smoking like we are anywhere else. Yeah. And that became a new thing that was really welcome and everyone really liked it and it helped them succeed. And Wi-Fi and all those things as well that were very new right. at the time. Right, exactly, yeah. So they brought what was special about them. Another coffee example is Blue Bottle Coffee. And I had a chance to talk with James Freeman. He's in San Francisco, where I am. Yeah. And you know, they got a lot of advice, make things really different for Japan. Yeah. And they actually changed very little, and they've been a huge hit here. For the first two shops. There is a bit of the, the initial boom, and there's all this mm -hmm. whole festival thing about, I mean, what, what's the place? Aozumi? Oh, um, uh, uh, Kiyosumi. 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 Kiyosumi, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Daiba, anyway. The middle of nowhere, and they, they have the longest queues ever seen in that part of Tokyo. Exactly. There, uh, and actually, there, there was a funny thing with Krispy Kreme when they came mm -hmm. to Tokyo. There were right. three they had the same queues. thing, right. And can you sustain it is really the issue, right? But it's kind of funny as well, because the shop in Shinjuku had three hour long queues, even though you could actually go one train stop away, five minutes away, and there were no queues at the other shop. People just like being in the long queue at that shop in oh, Shinjuku. That's pretty funny. I didn't hear that. That's actually, yeah. Well, it's kind of a... Well, it's sort of, it's a whole experience, just like people camp out in front of the Apple store waiting for the iPhone. Yes. It's a thing to do. It is a bit like that. And yeah. you know, uh, that, that's right. I never, I guess for the, for the Japanese expats coming back who heard that they're getting something... Yeah, there's a lot of buzz that went around the new releases, and that in itself right, is right, a thing. Right. But sustaining that is also a big challenge. Exactly, obviously. exactly. So, what, what do you think are examples of companies that came and didn't localize enough? Um, oh yeah, there's a there's a lot of different things. Um, well, this is a tricky example, but LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah, That's they interesting. Ha yeah, they haven't you know they haven't really tried to do anything different to meet the needs of the Japanese market. You know, and they don't really do that with any of their other places. Right. But it's the LinkedIn idea doesn't really fit here. Most Japanese I know are scared to be on LinkedIn because they, they think that their company will be mad at them. Well, and you know, I mean, I've, I've read on Gizmodo and the, the tech blogs and everything. I mean, even in America, occasionally employees get in trouble when their bosses see that they've updated their LinkedIn profile. Exactly, right, right. right. And so you can do the same thing here, or, you know, in 10 times that or more. Except you're kind of safe because nobody's heard of LinkedIn. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're working for a foreign company or something. Right. Oh. Uh, so you think that that's held them back, though? Yeah, I think I think most Japanese are reluctant to use it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, although in a way, I guess the brand hasn't really taken off. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, what would be an, a, an example of a success then, do you think, of uh, the right set of balance? I mean, we talked about Starbucks just right, before. Right, right, right. Um, I think Har Hargan Das is a great example where... I never knew that they were... I found out like a month ago they were from New Jersey. It completely blew my mind. Right, I right, right. right. <laughs> they have to get the exotic sounding name makes them sound like they're from Copenhagen or they're something. They're called Hagen yeah. Das. How could they be from New Jersey? I know, I know. <laughs> you know, everyone likes to have that veneer of classiness if they can put it on. I, right? I, I want to figure out who did the localization for New Jersey first. <laughs> <laughs> right, there you go. And it was a kind of a brilliant ad campaign, I mean, or just a branding campaign, right? But they've done really well here. And if you go and you yeah. look at the Hagen Das, you know, first of all, it's in the really small cups, which fits the market science here. But they have very, they have some very Japanese type flavors. You know, they do the azuki and the matcha. Well, they do all the limited thing. editions, which right, Japanese, right, which go Japanese crazy love about, those. Which, yeah, exactly. I'm, whenever I go to the committee, my wife says, you know, don't want anything unless there's a limited edition. Get one of those. And so there's always a limited edition. Oh, something of something. Right. So that is very smart. They also are very very tough on keeping the door closed on other competitors. Uh, what is it? Not, not Tom and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. Ben and Jerry's. I don't even know because I'm not, I'm not from America, but I've heard about this brand that's supposed to be very good. It's really good, yes. But it can't get a foothold in Japan because Hagen Dazs shuts them out. Oh, interesting. Well, how do they shut them out then? What oh, they're from New Jersey, right? Oh, right okay, so yeah, it actually makes go. sense, actually, when you think about it that way. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the Sopranos meets ice cream. But uh, yes, yeah, so uh, we've got more episodes coming up talking about different aspects of getting used to Japanese culture, but that's, that's our one on uh, mistakes that companies okay. make coming into Japan.